What is going on YouTube? Gab Monsieur, welcome to this new video. So today I want to talk about what everyone else is literally talking about this week. And I'm talking about Proton and Steam Play. So what it is, how to use it, how to make the most out of it, and what does it mean for us Linux gamers. So guys, with no further ado, let's check it out. Proton is a sort of fork of Wine, the compatibility layer that allows to run some Windows programs on Linux. Proton tries to be a sort of simplified Wine built right into Steam itself. The biggest advantage of a classic Wine is that you don't have to install Steam on top of Wine. Instead, you can use the native Steam client for Linux. Proton also includes some popular add-ons and patches to Wine. They included VKD3D and the XVK to translate their text 12 and 11 respectively to Vulkan to achieve better performance. They also applied the eSync patch set to improve multi-threaded performance. According to the announcement, they also have improved controller support compared to Vanilla Wine, as well as full screen compatibility. One of the most interesting additions is the integration with OpenVR that would allow to run VR games on Linux and that's a very important part since there are virtually no VR games on Linux at this point. In theory most games that work on Wine already should work as well using Proton. Most games using Vulkan or OpenGL natively like No Man's Sky and Doom 2016 should be the easiest to run. In practice, just half of that is true. In fact, when you're using Wine, you have the ability to tweak and play around with your virtual Wine installation, also known as Wine Prefix, to work around specific issues that you may find in different games. Doing this is not incredibly easy with Proton, since the complexity of Wine is hidden behind the Steam's UI. Moreover, Proton is a very specific version of Wine, and if for some reason a certain game runs better in a specific version more than another, at this point there is no way that I know how to change the Wine version per game. I mean, yes, you can change the Proton version, but not the Wine version per se. This said, I tried running some games using Proton, and here's what I found out. No Man's Sky, Final Fantasy VII, Batman Arkham Origins and Dark Souls 3 work flawlessly. Fallout 4 works, but out of the box some audio channels don't work, as I explained in one of my previous videos, uh, to talking specifically about Fallout 4 on Wine, you need to run Wine Tricks X Act on the Fallout 4 Proton Wine Prefix and set all X audio overrides to native for it to work. This fixes the audio problems, but just as with traditional Wine, Fallout 4 shows a strange bug with the mouse and you cannot look far right, at some point the mouse movement just kind of blocks. I'm not sure what's causing this problem, but as it is, Fallout 4 is only playable with a controller. Skyrim Special Edition shares the same audio problem as Fallout 4, but in Skyrim there seems to be some sort of bug where I can't get past the initial cutscene. As soon as the card stops in Helgen, nothing happens and I can't get farther in game. Life is Strange Before the Storm seems to work, but in-game models are invisible, creating an amusing but game-breaking glitch and apparently this only happens when using the XVK specifically and is easily solved by adding Proton use Wine D3D11 equals 1 percent common percent in the launch options. After that the game mostly works but I have had some weird issues with the mouse movement and unfortunately gamepads don't seem to work at this point, at least for this specific game. There are also some games like Sacred to Gold and Batman Arkham Asylum that don't work at all. They don't even launch and there doesn't seem to be an easy way to find out why. I mean, there is an option in Proton to spit out a log file, but I couldn't make much of it myself. Of course, I alone couldn't test all the games out there, but fortunately there is a website that's collecting user submitted reports of games compatibility with Proton. You can reach it at uh, spcr.netlify.com you will find the link in the description. As I just mentioned, Proton is not always just a one-click solution and you may want to mess around with some stuff to try and make a particular game work. In this section I want to give you a little tutorial on how to enable and use Proton as well as learning how to get familiar with it. First off, enabling Proton is really easy. 
you just open up Steam, go to settings, Steam Play, and activate the enable Steam Play for supported titles and enable Steam Play for all titles checkboxes. To enable that, just a few days ago you had to use the beta version of the Steam client, but that's no longer the case since Valve has included Steam Play and Proton into the stable branch of Steam. I still kind of suggest you to try the beta version of the client just to stay on the bleeding edge of this new technology. Remember that Proton has really just been released and it's gonna be updated pretty frequently and it's a beta by itself. I think that if you want to make sure to get all the latest and greatest features and bug fixes, you're probably better off using the beta version of both the client and Proton itself. Just keep in mind that my experience and my expertise are in yours, so if you are feeling like solving potential problems that may or may not occur by using anything beta, just use the stable branches. Now that you have enabled Steam Play, you're going to be greeted by your complete library of games available right away on Linux. As I said earlier, out-of-the-box compatibility is kind of hit or miss. You may want to play around with your games, change and tweak stuff and try to make games work. So the first thing that you probably want to do is enable the Proton settings file. To do that, first you need to have Proton actually installed. I believe that to get it, you need to download any non-native game on Steam. The next thing is identifying your Proton installation folder. If you just have one Steam library, it's pretty easy. It should be just in your home folder, go to .local, share, Steam, Steam apps, common, and then Proton followed by the version you have installed. If you have multiple Steam libraries, it should be your default one or at least inside one of the libraries. So just navigate into one of your different uh, library folders and go to Steam Apps Common and then again Proton and its version number. Once you have identified your Proton folder, open it up and inside you will find a file called user underscore settings dot sample dot pi. You need to copy that into the same folder and rename the copy to user underscore settings.py. This is your Proton configuration file. Once you open it up, it's pretty simple. All your configurations are stored inside of this data structure called dictionary. If you are familiar with JSON, that's basically the same thing. If you're not, it's dirt simple. Inside of the curly brackets, you can put a list of key value pairs like so. Quote, key, quote, colon, Again, quote, value, quote, and comma. That's it, it's really easy. One thing that I really suggest you enable is the DXVKHUD. To enable it, just add a pair like this. The key is DXVK underscore HUD, all caps, and the value is devinfo, comma, FPS. If you want to know more about the options that you can use inside this file, just look at the runtime config option section of Proton's README. You can find it at github.com slash valve software slash proton pound sign runtime uh, dash config dash options and as always I will leave the link in the description. The variables that you see here are also usable on a per game basis. For instance, if you want Life is Strange before the storm to render correctly, you need to later use the built-in uh, DX11 implementation. To do that, you right-click on the game in Steam, press on Properties, Set Launch Options, and then write all caps Proton underscore use underscore YND3D11 equals 1 space percent common percent, and that's it. Another thing that you probably want to do is playing around with Proton's wine prefixes. First off, what is wine prefix? It's basically the folder where your wine installation is located. When using wine, it's a good practice to have one separate wine prefix per software that you need to run. And fortunately, Proton follows this practice. You may want to install some things on top of your wine prefix or run what we call wine tricks. Depending on the game you're trying to run, this may very well be mandatory. To do that, you have to find the wine prefix folder specific to your game. Before doing anything, you need to install wine and wine tricks on your system. I suggest you install the very latest version that you can get on your distribution. And if you don't know how to do that in your own Ubuntu, just follow this guide on wiki.1hq.org/ubuntu. Obviously, the link will be in the description. 
Now just install and try running the game for the first time. This will generate the wine prefix for that game. Next you need to open up steamdb.info, link in the description, and search for your game in the search bar. In this example I'm going to search for Fallout 4, and once you find the exact game, and make sure you're not looking at a DLC or something else, on the left side you're gonna see the app ID of the game. Write it down or keep the window open. Now go to the Steam library folder where you installed your game. Open it up and go to Steam apps slash compat data. The compat data folder contains the wine prefixes for the game that you have installed. Open up the folder named after the app ID of your game. Inside of it you'll find your actual wine prefix folder. That's simply called PFX. Just to make sure, it wouldn't be a bad idea to make a copy of the wine prefix before doing anything else. This is just to make sure that if you F up a prefix, you have an easy way to get it back to its original state. Now as an example, for Fallout 4 you need to run Winetrix X Act on the wine prefix. To do that, open up a terminal inside the folder that contains the prefix and write the following command. All caps, wine arch equals um, win64, again all caps, wine prefix equals dollar sign, pwd, again caps, slash pfx, and then wine tricks x act. Let it do its thing and you're done. You run a wine trick on a proton wine prefix. Another very easy thing to play around with at this point is wine cfg, which is basically a mini control panel for wine. Let's say we want to open up a wine cfg again for Fallout 4. Once again, open a terminal window inside the folder that contains the prefix, then run wine arch equals win64 wine prefix equals dollar sign pwd slash pfx wine cfg. Inside of it, you can mess up with libraries, graphics options, and stuff like that. If you're not sure what you're doing, again, you made the backup so you can play around with it, you can experiment, but it's you're probably better off if you just, if you just search online for what various options of wine CFG mean. Now you should have a pretty good idea of how Proton works, or at least know where everything is stored. This should make your life easier if you need to tweak a thing or two in a particular game. I'm really happy to see Valve continuing to invest in Linux gaming. And finally having a tool that allows Linux gamers to play previously Windows only titles without having to mess around with Wine manually is a great thing. I think that this new tool will allow people that are currently dual booting Windows and Linux to ditch out their Windows installations completely and go full Linux. And that alone is awesome. But I also have some concerns. For one, I think that there is a possibility that game developers will stop even considering native versions of their games for Linux, relying instead on Proton to satisfy the Linux market. And while being able to play games that will probably never see a Linux release is great, precluding ourselves the possibility to have native ports that would most likely perform a lot better compared to Wine is a huge risk. There's also another question to be asked. How is this really more convenient than standard Wine or Lutris? If you really know what you're doing and, unlike me, don't get easily bored by managing tens or even hundreds of different Wine prefixes by hand, it's not that different. In practice, for lazy people like me, or for someone who maybe just switched to Linux or doesn't like to get down to technical stuff, it does make a big difference. Another huge difference is that if you run your games using Proton, it doesn't count as running on Windows, like with traditional Wine. Instead, game developers will see an actual number of people running their Windows games on Linux without them even supporting it officially. This really has the potential to shake up the PC gaming market as a whole. So guys, this is gonna wrap it up for this video. Thank you very much for watching, I really do appreciate it. If you like this video, please make sure to press the thumbs up button down there and also remember to subscribe to my channel if you want more of this. Also make sure to check out the TechPills website at techpills.technology, you will find the link in the description. So again guys, thanks for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next one.